So, now we have... I'm sorry to keep on starting out the same way. Okay, so... I annoy myself. <laughs> okay. Being objective. Yep. Being objective, I think, weaves in exactly what we're talking about so well, right? Yes. Because you can't, you can't be brave or courageous if you can't see objectively. Yes. Yeah, I would absolutely say that. Yes. Because. You can be brave. Well, I think it's brave being brave in your own eyes, right? Yes. So you can be like something that Jordan Peterson talks about. He talks about how people associate, for example, they project themselves in terms like if they're watching a movie on Nazi Germany. They would, people typically put themselves in a the position of either the Jews or the freedom fighters. But he said they, they never put themselves in the position of being the, the Nazi forces. Yes. And he's saying that yep. that's where the mistake is actually made. Yes. Because people assume that, oh, I'd be an ally fighter, I'd be helping them out and everything. It's like, probably actually not. Yeah. That's what his argument is. Probably actually not. The reason why is that it's the same reason why you're stuck where you are right now. You're too busy people-pleasing and rationalizing that in order to be brave to actually do something. Yeah. So you can say that I'm brave without actually showing the work. Yeah. Yeah. So that Jordan Peterson. Let me, <laughs> let me start with that. <laughs> right. What a word. Who says things like that? It's great. <laughs> But I've got to, he's so true. So I'm a pastor, teacher. Mm. Right? One of the things that I love to do in my teaching is make the story relevant. Mm -hmm. And the story's not relevant as long as you see it as what those people over there did. Right. So when I, I'm on my square, when I'm really teaching well, I will read a story and allow you to identify yourself with however you identify yourself. But then as I'm developing the text, I'm bringing the villain, right? I'm using my quotation fingers here. Mm -mm. I'm bringing the villain closer and closer to where you are. Because it's easy to believe that people just do these things that don't please God because they are bad or crazy Something is just wrong with them. They are just in some way completely deformed and such so spiritually deficient and so riddled with evil, right? That's De easy. Deplorable. Deplorable. <laughs> Until you start bringing the story home. Here's who these people were. Here's what they believed. Here were, here, here were their strengths. Here were their weaknesses, right? When I'm done, the villain is you. And they just made one or two wrong moves that took them off the cliff. Yep. Right. But you aren't too much further than one or two wrong moves off the cliff as well. Right. But for the grace of God. Right. 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 Because I think that it's so interesting how everyone gets on the Pharisees. Yes. I think it's hilarious to me. I think that people really assume, it's like, I can't believe they would do that. It's like, uh, if you are just sitting there telling other people what to do Yep. because God said this, this, and this in the word. How does that make you any different? Yeah, right. You know? Yes. Like that, cause, and, and a lot of people think that that's all the Christianity is. Repent, do this, yes. do this, do this, do this. It's yep. like, that's not the job. Right. 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 So being right, I'm going I'm to pick on a phrase that I never use. So being woke is not being able to see the speck in everybody else's eye. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Being woke is being able to see and remove the beam in your eye. 
Yes. That's woke. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was what was even so interesting now is actually there's a guy uh, who's on uh, from Brand Nubian, um, Lord Jamar <laughs> from Brand Nubian. He's okay. on Vlad TV a whole lot. And people like him because he's brave. Yep. He's brave and he just says whatever he wants to say on there and people love him for that to the point where he is on every single week. <laughs> wow. And he's been on every single week for three or four years. Wow. Because of that one quality, he says whatever he wants. He says things like, Eminem is a guest in the house of hip hop <clears throat> because he's white. Shut him up. <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, the the, the, arg- the argument is, well, who started hip hop? Was it black people or yeah. was it a community of people in Brooklyn that consisted of black people, some white people, and some Puerto Ricans also? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. yeah. 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 I mean, listen, yeah. I'm not, again, this is that's, a, that's another podcast. Right, right, right. I'm not saying that he's right or wrong. I just... I would not have thought of it like that. I would have been like Eminem, wealthy, multi platinum artist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't care. He don't <laughs> care. Right. He's on something else. Yeah, he's on something else. He's also five percent or two, so I also explains a lot yeah, of things too. Anyway. That. So but he said he talked about um how today's society is actually revenge of the nerds. Yes. Wow, but yes. <laughs> I thought about that. I was like, oh, because I've been, I've known that, but it's the way he put it so concisely in that. I was like, yes. that's perfect. Yes. It is Revenge of the Nerds. Yep. Yep. Me being one, I should know. Yeah. <laughs> so, it is because the kind of aggressiveness and bullying that you saw face to face, you see it completely manifested online now. Except now I don't have to have the physique or the physical attributes to back it up. I can just go ahead and destroy you online. I can ask for your job because you said this online. It's bullying. Yeah. You know? The the nerds have now become the bullies in a lot of ways. In most ways, you know, and, but that goes back into getting the beam out of your eye. You're employing the exact same tactics that you were taught from the bullies and now you're employing them. So how, again, does that make you any different? Because if you are using a position of power, rather physically or even digitally, then how are you not a bully? Yeah, yeah. So, right, I'm going to, oof. <laughs> Jamar has many things to say about bullying. This is now coming back to me, so I think I triggered Jamar. <laughs> well, so I think about how you can respond as a bully. The only way to do that is to make somebody else a villain, mm. right? to make somebody else something other than. And so if you can dehumanize them is a word I'm going to use, right? If you can make them not human, something abnormal, then you can justify you becoming the bully. Yeah. Right? But as long as they're human, then especially if you've been bullied, especially if you've been in those situations, it becomes almost impossible to respond by bullying back, right? The only proper response is compassion or making this a teachable moment, right? So you've got to do something to them in order to, in order to then do something to them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And real quick too, guys, one of the passions of the hour came in just now. As I said, we might have a special guest coming in and that is now Passion Devin Porter. Let's give him a round of applause. Um, <laughs> say, say what's up to the to the good people. Hello, everybody. How are you? <laughs> got that got that passive rhythm voice. Nice. There. Come on. <laughs> so, um, so, but yes, in terms of in terms of having being objective, because that's what the topic that we're on right now. We're being we're talking about being objective, having a true north. Yes. So. 
now things are so... I don't know. Everyone just believes what they're doing is right. So that's what we're talking about being a bully. Yeah. Is that when you believe that you're right or when you want to attain power like that, you know, then you go ahead and bully and run over everyone else. Yeah. That you... That gets in your way. So... When we're talking about being objective here, we're talking about... We're talking about what is the true north. And how do we become... How do we actually embody being objective you know how do we actually make sure that we are pointing towards true north because we see what happens in society when there's no true north so to uh, people who are starving who are robbers who are you know doing all kinds of illegal activities all that kind of stuff you know they look at it as them being objectively right because they shouldn't have done that to me. But it goes back into what we were talking about before, yes. which is going by man's law versus what God's law actually That's is. Correct. What, That's what, correct. what he actually likes. That's correct. You know? So there seems to be a direct correlation between you doing what people want you to do and how they want you to feel and you not caring about how you uh, how people feel about you, but you know that you're right with God. Yes. Yeah. You know? So did you want to weigh in real quick? Let's go, you can go ahead and weigh in real quick uh, there. Uh, 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 hearing you talk about um, uh, God's law versus the humanistic of man's law, um, I think that um, we have to all uh, focus in on the situation uh, that um, uh, what is God's law versus man's law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we as humans, we fall short because we want to put we want to take the short way out. Should right. I say we want to, We want to. We want to microwave life. Um, escape. E- escape. Uh, mm-hmm. You know the doubt that you know I can do this on my own. I you know I don't need the help of someone else because we're human nature. You know, um, and and most of us are taught you know to you know by our parents to take care of yourself. You know, do things on your own. You know, don't try to ask the next man for something. So we try to go throughout life not being, excuse me, not being a help asker, not asking people for help, uh, when in long terms, you know, that could be, that could pose a great threat, you know, um, uh, um, just period, you know, mm-hmm. um, I think that that's what people struggle with, you know, uh, the, it's, it's not become more of a spiritual sense, you know, because I believe that, most people in this world today has some spiritual uh, principle about themselves. Whether you study Hindu, whether you study Christianity, whether you study mm-hmm. Muslim background, you know, the uh, Islamic religion. So you, you have that form of whatever you are taught. Uh, so you have a formality of it, but, you know, you, you, you try not to really grasp hold of that. I think that that's the real issue of what people struggle with um, on a day-to-day, you know, uh, is that... Am I doing the right things as to oppose to what I'm being taught? Mm. So, so you're saying that it's 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 a well law of God written on man's heart. Yep. Right. So there's that there's that thing where I know I shouldn't have done this, so I'm going to go ahead and work as hard as I possibly can, and provide as much evidence as I possibly can to shut that voice up. Though it never goes away. <laughs> and so I think that then you become, then anyone who agrees with that voice becomes a megaphone for them when you're just saying, you know, hey, you might not want to do that. Yeah. Or, hey, this is sin. You might want to do that. Yeah. Then it becomes even more pronounced because it's already raging inside anyway. Yeah. And that's the one area that it's really tender in. So like when you get like beat up and everything, you know, when you have a black guy, like you just barely touch your cheek. Ow, stop that. You know? Yeah. So... So I think that when people react to the truth, and Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he, he embodies that. That means that if there's an objective truth, that means that when you bring it up to people, that truth is ringing loud and making people, and has made people sore that they've been dealing with for a long time. So as soon as you open your mouth, ouch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, right, I think that Something you said, Pastor Davenport, that I think is absolutely true is doing what you're doing as opposed to what you've been taught. And I think it comes back back to true north. Right. My, I, have a, I have a new coworker. 
Um, her first question when she came to the office was, what is the source of truth? Hmm. Right, what are we going to say right, when somebody asks us for data? I'm an analyst right, professionally. When someone asks me for data, if I have two conflicting sources, which one am I going to say is the primary source of truth? Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that there is the truth that they know is loud in their ear, mm-hmm. but then there's what they want to do. And they haven't settled on which one is going to be the source of truth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because once you settle on that, then it makes reconciling with that easier. But as long as there's a fight, as long as there is, right, you can hear my watch, I'm banging my fist together. (laughs) As long as there is still a fight about which one of these we're going to call a source of truth, even though you have these loud voices of teaching ringing in your ear, as long as you haven't said out loud, as long as you haven't resolved that as a Christian, the Bible is going to be the source of truth, right? Then the the fight goes on. Mm. And that's what it is. The fight goes on. Yeah, yeah. And it is a fight. It is. <laughs> you know, uh, picking back on what you just said there, you, you said some deep stuff there. Um, I, I think that uh, uh, we wrestle with with the carnal mind and then the spirit. Yep. You know, uh, for the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against things in high places. Mm-hmm. So it comes a point in time like, like, like the 12, for example, you know, they all came from different ethnic backgrounds. They all um, walked different pathways before they met Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, and and we're going to use Judas for an example. Yep. You know, uh, the traitor. You know, uh, the night that uh, Jesus was taken into captivity. You know, he gave him up. You know, did he mean to do that intentionally? Here's a guy that you know walked with him. 30 plus years prior to his execution, you know, was taught by him, you know, was taught principles, was taught how to be a fisherman of men. And then he goes off and he betrays him. So, you know, picking back off of what you said, I think that most people have to get past the, um, the doubt in their mind that you're not just wrestling with your mind. At some point, there's there's a gray area there. You know, uh, it, it's very uh, shallow. You know, I think most most people think that it's all about me. It has to be about me, and if it's not my way, then it's the highway. You know, so you have to live a life according to carrying out the principles of the past, but remembering what you're taught, but not taking that into uh, intuition should I say, because notice is what Jesus said prior to, you know, uh, him being taken into captivity. He told Jesus, do, hey man, do whatever you got to do, you know, uh, be about it quickly, mm-hmm. you know, and then that's when Judas realized, I just, I just done something in my mind. See, sitting at the table with Jesus, he didn't, he didn't realize that, you know, when he took that money from the tax collectors and from, 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 uh, from the high palace, he didn't, he didn't realize what he was doing. You know, it, it took for Jesus to die yeah. or to go to the cross for him to realize for for guilt to set in to say, hey, I've done something wrong here. You know, a lot of people and that's how people live day to day. You know, they wake up, they have breath in their body, they go to work, they play, they, you know, uh, they come back home to their families and everything is supposed to be OK. They take life for granted in a sense, you know, um, and, and in terms we shouldn't. We should live every single day knowing that, hey, this is Christ. Christ put breath in our body. Christ allowed us to wake up. Christ allowed me to come back um, home to my family. And if it was not for him, then I wouldn't be I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be back home with my families. I wouldn't be able to go to a job or be able to even be able to breathe this thing called oxygen into my body. You know, so I think it's time that we focus on not just taking little things for granted because you could be here today and gone tomorrow. I, I think there's something very really important that you were talking about too. I think it, this sums up a lot of what goes on here is selfishness versus thinking outside of yourself. Yeah. Selflessness, right? So the implications of when you don't have a true north, it is all about you. It's about you protecting your stuff, your yeah. ego, 
you know, I don't want to deal with that, right? So therefore, I'm not really that kind of person. But wait a minute, God called you out to do this. So how can you tell him that you're not kind of person? That's the same argument that Moses was having with God. Right. You know? So someone's wrong here. <laughs> you know? So, but really it's just an avoidance to make sure, because again, your brain wants to make sure that you avoid trauma. It's designed that way. So, you know, you burn your hand, you don't do it anymore. It's like, okay, got it. Or you go through a painful breakup, okay, got it. No more of that. You know, it's constantly trying to find ways to avoid trauma. So when a person becomes inside their head all the time, they can never see an objective truth because they're trying to avoid trauma. I saw, I saw this, I think it was called, what was it called? It was some kind of meeting that they had where they were talking about, you know, taking down capitalism and replacing it with socialism or whatever, right? And some of the people that got up there were saying things like, comrade, they called each other comrades. Like, yes. so, comrade, can you please, can people please quiet down over here because that's triggering my anxiety right now yeah, because too many things going on and it's it making me unfocused and everything. And so I would really appreciate, you know, you not doing that. So this other person was a uh, trans person and they raised their hands like, could you not use the guy pronoun? Yeah. You know, and can you not use the guy pronoun? This is an actual thing. This is not like a, like a, it was yep. an actual thing. Yeah. The guy said, uh, point of, point of privilege, he, him, you know, please stop, talk, you know, whispering yeah. among yourselves. And then the other guy got mad because he used the, the he, him pronoun, right? The, right, 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 right. Messed him up. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, so, but all that was for one thing, one thing only, ego. To make sure that wall stays up. You know? Make sure my wall stays up. And it's your responsibility to make sure it stays up. That's right. Not mine. Not, not theirs. Even though it's my wall. Right. But <laughs> putting that aside. Right. <laughs> right. So, so then it becomes about, now I'm not even responsible for my own wall, my own, wall, my own ego. Yeah. Now you're responsible for my ego, for my self-defense mechanisms. And that's, yeah. how do you even deal with that? How can someone even be responsible for someone else's ego? So... When you have that much ego, so I, there's almost di like different levels of it now. So there's like you know your ego, as in you know your like I said, your self defense mechanisms that gets you around problems rather than going through problems. Because Jesus was, because God's always been saying, go through that, go through the River Jordan, go through this, go through that. You go through it. Be mm -hmm. a good courage. Go, 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 go forward. He's always been saying that, mm -hmm. right? Always. Never said stop here, you know, you don't have to do it because it's too hard. He never said that. Sure didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus was not saying, you know, hey, well, if permission of the state allows it, go and make the disciples. Yeah. Never said that. And yep. he knew what had just happened to him. Yeah. He was like, oh, have fun. I'll see you when you get up here. Yeah. Right? So when you have when you when you don't have when you don't have true normal, you're it's, it has to be all about you. Because then you're not seeing what not being brave costs people. What not being courageous costs people. And I think a lot of times, with the way the culture is being shaped right here, would it be as misshaping as the culture is if the church was being more courageous and being more brave? You know, that that's a great topic. Um, and and uh, on my way over here, I had to pray about it, and I think now that it's it, it's time for me to talk about it a little bit, when you talk about the church uh, and being courageous, um, I think that first and foremost, when we uh, have taken God out of the center um, and not made him the focal point, yeah. I think... Uh, that's true north, that's objective. Right? I, I, yeah. You know, um, because people have their own opinions about different religions or you know we try to respect this person's religion or we try to but but jesus said i am the way the truth and the light That's right. and no man can get to christ but through me mm -hmm. so you know um i think when we start settling for other people's opinions mm -hmm. I, i'll use that that as the cliche when we start settling at for other people's opinions because based on how they feel instead of standing up and saying hey 
This is who I serve. This is what I represent, you know, and still having a respect for what they believe in, but saying, I'm not going to veer from that. You know, I'm not going to change from that based off of what I believe in. You know, um, it, it, it becomes hard because, to be honest, if, if, if based off of some of the things that I'm going through right now, if I did not have Christ in my life, if I did not have him as the center, you know, and and uh, did not know where my true north was, yes, then I will be a sh- I will be a ship without a sail. Yep. You know, I'll be shipwrecked because the blind can't lead the blind. It's it, it's biblical principle. Yep. He said, "How can two walk together unless they agree?" Mm-hmm. You know. So I try to tend to when when someone's not in my true north or when someone's not in the center of what I believe in. Yes, I. I still am friends with you because like the word says, you know, if how can you love Christ if you don't love your neighbor, you know, whom and you've never seen Christ, you know, so I still have to love you. I still have to treat you as a brethren, but we just don't agree. And the Bible says that I have to shake the dust from my feet. If I'm not received, shake the dust from your feet and and continue to to live my path. You know, I'm not going to agree with everybody. I'm not going to uh, uh, have a true relationship with everyone. You know, you're still my brother and at the end of the day, but we just don't agree, you know, um, and and that's okay. You know, I think that in order to have a true north, you still have to lower, know how to get along with the next person in their true north, in, in their whatever they are, you know, because everybody is not the same, you know, even though we bleed the same blood. You have different races, you have different colors, you have different creeds. And I think the real issue, the deep-rooted issue is finding people that are like you, move like you, talk like you, uh, 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 work like you, you know, uh, to be centered around. You know, it's, it's just mm-hmm. like you said, uh, uh, you, y'all were picking back on that um, group of people, yeah. you know, that w- one guy got mad because... You know, he used he, him, or the other guy got uh, upset because he raised his hand. You know, uh, they weren't centered. You know, you have to be able to still um, uh, be in that group of people and know a person's comfort zone. What's going to push a person to an edge? What's going to, you know, this person may not like this. This person may not like that. So so now the true focal point is how do I operate um, around people that are not like me? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, I think that can take us into the next portion there too. So, the next portion is going to be, I think, segues right into that. Well, unless anyone had anything else to say, I don't want to cut anything else before what the spirit's doing. Um, but being bold. So we're going to talk about next being bold. 